this is actually a weapon that Fiori covers, um, but it's not, um, it's not a very common one. So I thought I'll, I'll sort of introduce you to the weapon and talk a little bit about the general typology of, of what it is as well. Um, just in case you don't know what one is or you've never seen one before. So, it is a javelina. Okay, so it looks a lot like a winged spear. Um, if you're going to call it anything in English, that's probably what I'd call it. Javarina, uh, the Italian comes from the same sort of root as javelin, um, but this is not a javelin. Okay, so there were javelins and there were throwing spears um, in the medieval period, obviously, um, been around forever, but this isn't something that you're really throwing. Um, it's a lot heavier than that, basically. Yeah, um, it's it's much more um, solid than a throwing spear. So, let me show you the manuscript first of all. So, you can see that. So, Fiore only shows this on one page um, of his manuscripts. It's just a little kind of add-on after the um, horseback section. So first two images, we've, it's basically the same format as the Three Bad Men, um, which you see in the Una Mano and the Due Mano, okay? So you've got three guys with spears. One is holding it, um, hold on, a spear. Right, so the first guy is on the horse, he says he's holding it in the middle of the spear, um, underarm, yeah, ready to stab. The next guy, he's got it couched at the full length of the spear. And then the other guy is ready to uh, throw his spear or lance at the guy with the javelina. Okay. So, again, just like in the other in two instances of the three bad men, he is waiting for it in Boar's Tooth with the javelina. And the play is basically the same. He says he creases offline and beats it out of the way as he moves forward. Okay? So whether it's couched, whether it's not couched, whether it's thrown, he does the same thing. Now the next one, next two plays, he only shows two plays. One is he's basically stabbing the guy in the face or or cutting him. Yeah? He says he will either thrust or cut, yeah. And then the next one is what happens if your head's taken off or your point's taken offline? Well, you turn the butt on and then you strike him, okay? So obviously this is pretty unique in the manuscript in as far as it's on foot against horseback, but he's doing the same sort of stuff as he's already shown you in uh, the previous sections of the sword, okay? So... Go back to the Javarina itself. Um, so because it's shown against people on horseback, I wanted something that was longer uh, than, my, than my standard spears. Um, it needs quite a bit of reach, quite a bit of range, if you're going to be starting to attack somebody up on horseback. Okay, and it needs to be solid, so it's quite a quite a sturdy um, haft on it. Now, I've got a, a Pinterest board with various examples of Javarinas in museums. We tend to fall sort of between two sorts of categories. Uh, one, the actual tip is a bit more sort of spear sized and shaped, and the flukes, these things sticking out at the side, are a bit, tend to be a bit smaller and triangular. Yeah. Um, but then there are other types, which is more similar to this, where the tip is actually very large, very triangular, um, much more cutty and thrusty than a spear, which is, you know, not quite as cutty. And these flukes tend to get larger. So some of them come right out, yeah, some of them are really big, like the Doge's Palace ones from Venice are really big. Um, the one in Nuremberg, that one's pretty big as well. So I'll add a link to that Pinterest board. Um, have a little look. Have a look at them. Uh, so, 
This one is by Joe Dawes at Whitewell Arms. I pretty much get all my pole weapons from Joe. I just gave him the picture of the Getty, sent him a couple of images of Jabberinas and this is what turned up for him. Um, so it's not based on one specific historical example or anything like that. Um, the flukes, you see this sort of fluke in quite a lot of pole arms, but it's, it's, you know, it's not ubiquitous. Sometimes they are just straight, sometimes they come straight out. So all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, the blade is sharp all the way down its length. So if I come a little bit closer, so there you go. Yeah, it's not got langets, but it's got this sort of um, split socket on it. Flukes, a little bit of decoration on them. They're not sharp, but they are pointy. Yeah, the actual blade. There. Yeah. This particular one. Uh, it's got quite a solid tip on it, but it's not specifically reinforced, okay? There we go. The haft is octagonal in shape, just like my Polax hafts. It's about the same sort of size as well, to be honest. So it's, it's mostly square, but with the edges just taken off, yeah? And then it tapers down quite a lot into this circular section, cross section. And then the butt end is quite fine there. Um, it's square profile with a bit of a point on the end. Okay, that just adds a little bit of counterbalance, but it is a very. Where's the balance on it? It's quite a top heavy weapon. Yeah, so the balance point is somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, Practically, when you're using it, this particular one feels more um, more poleaxy than spear. Uh, obviously, you can still do a lot of spear plays with it, from um, Porta de Ferro Lomitano, or um, Tutto Porta de Ferro, or Vera Croce. Yeah. But if you start trying to get into uh, Fenestra there, it's really unwieldy. It's not ideal for that. Um, whereas, if you're up in Possibly Donna, or Possibly Donna, um, the Polax version, you can cut with that nice, nice and easy. You could also strike with the flukes. Um, again, cut longer, works well. You can come through there, no problem. Breville Serpentina works, Vera Croce works, yeah. Um, even uh, Finestra from Polax, that also works, yeah. So you, you might have even some sort of blow there, come back, and you could still... But if you handle some of the more spear proportion ones, like um, Matt Lewis has got a nice version that he had made that's more of the spear proportions, that's a bit lighter and a little bit more lightweight, so you could probably get away with using that in a pure spear fashion, yeah. Um, but I wanted one that was a little bit of a larger sort of dimensions. Um, I didn't just want a winged spear. I wanted something that was a little bit more um, kind of unique to Fury. So uh, that's a Jamarina. Uh, it's pretty brutal. I've cut things with this. It'll pretty much cut through anything. Um, it's fast. It's, it's manoeuvrable, you know, you, you can use it in all sort of same ways um, that you'd use your Fiori pole arms. Um, but yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a lovely thing. Uh, but interesting because, as far as I know, Fiori is the only HEMA manuscript that deals with these. Um, you get slightly later and different weapons called Partisans, which are sort of similar in a way. Um, and some of the later treatises show those, um, but you get into your Moroxos and your things like that where, you know, it's, it's not got the medieval sort of mindset. It's, it's starting to get into, well, I think it's starting to get a little bit more into civilian and practice combat. Um, so, but that's another argument. Uh, so, that's it.